Good morning, everyone. Welcome to AM Sports here with me, Muftao Nabila Abdullah. On Monday, it emerged that the Ministry of Youth and Sports budgeted $8.5 million for Ghana's participation in this year's African Cup of Nations, which is currently ongoing. But the Black Stars got knocked out of the tournament exactly a week ago. The Member of Parliament for North Tongue, Samuel Okujato Ablakwa, revealed on his social media pages that the chief director of the ministry wrote to the finance minister on January 2 to demand about $5 million out of the $8.5 million they requested for Ghana's participation in the tournament. He did, however, did not state um, what specifically the money they requested for was used uh, on. And now, uh, let's take a look at a report that was put together by my colleague, uh, Daniel Quentin, having gone through the details that were spelled out by Okujato Ablakwa. The North Tongue MP, Samuel Okujato Ablakwa, claims an amount of $8.5 million was set aside for the Black Stars' participation in the continent's flagship tournament. According to him, the figure excludes the $1.5 million spent during the AFCON qualifiers. The figure, $8.5 million, is contained in an intercepted letter from the Ministry of Youth and Sports dated 2nd January 2024, posted on the parliamentarian social media accounts. The letter, addressed to the Minister of Finance, requesting part payment of $5 million from the Black Star's total budget of $8.5 million is signed by the Chief Director of the Ministry of Youth and Sports, Mr. William Kati, on behalf of the Sports Minister, Mustafa Yusuf. The winner of the AFCON stands to gain $7 million, $1.5 million more than Ghana's alleged budget. Now let's hear from uh, a member of the Parliamentary Select Committee on Sports, Governor Mensa Woyome. He has criticized the National Sports Authority, describing them as an entity which is not doing anything. According to him, they should be playing a critical role in the national team that would ensure that there's success when Ghana goes out there to represent the country. It's ineffective, they are not working, and they are disappointing Ghanaians. You see, the National Sports Authority are there to ensure that all national teams, all national teams, including the Black Stars, all national teams across board, that's so far as sports is concerned, we have national teams across, but so far as football is concerned, Black Stars. National Sports Authority should have people with the capacity to be able to also assist and support decisions into the scouting process. Who goes into what? How do you select people across the country? The processes and so on. You understand? And help in getting people to the, you understand? And then have a certain degree of rapport with the technical handlers of the national teams to the extent that they will be able to suggest the way forward, and so on. But the National Sports Authority has gone to sleep. Ab absolutely. So it's a matter you should take up. Go to them and find out from them whether they are really working. So far as this is concerned, I get in it. So there's the need. Because National Sports Authority should not be sleeping on this. Because they are supposed to be working with the federations. The federations more or less are quasi-private and quite autonomous in terms of their affiliations with their international body. In this case, FA has its, their FIFA, but that body, and then uh, other entities and so on and so forth. So they work in that. But when it comes to the national teams that belong to you and I, the federations are just catechists. Your money takes care of them. The National Sports Authority, in taking care of, in, in ensuring that your caretakers also perform and deliver, you also have a third eye. That is, people who understand the, the, the terrain. Governor Mensah Oyome, a member of the Parliamentary Select Committee on Sports, they're speaking 
to Joy Sports. Now let's go on Zoom and speak to the board chairman of the National Sports Authority, Seth Apanwum, uh, who is joining us to speak to us. Seth, you heard uh, Governor Mensah William say your office is ineffective. Your office is not contributing to the development of the national teams because at least you, do, you should have people, uh, technical people, contribute when it comes to Ghana's participation in various uh, competitions. What do you have to say? Good morning, Seth. Can you hear me? I can hardly hear you, Seth. Yeah, good morning, Nabla, and good morning to our viewers also. Yeah, I can hear you. Please, um, Commander Mensah Williams says your office is ineffective and that you're doing nothing. Um, I think I disagree with uh, Wyomi on this one. He's a, he's a good friend and he has been around the National Sports Authority and uh, various federations in the number of uh, tournaments that we've been together. Uh, basically, uh, under the Sports Act, National Sports Authority is supposed to be the technical wing of the Ministry of Youth and Sports. You know, and we are supposed to play a critical role in all the national teams, uh, not only limited to uh, uh, football, but all the national teams in Ghana. Uh, but we have seen that this trend has consciously eaten into the relationship between the uh, Ministry of Youth and Sports and that of the Football Federation. I mean, crumping on the uh, the role that has desirable assigned to the National Sports Authority, you know, and this challenge is what we are actually uh, uh, pushing hard to have uh, it reconciled. And hopefully, we are relying on the Sports Act that the ally that is currently before Parliament for passing, and it will clearly come out to firm up most of the issues. If you listen to the uh, previous and current uh, ministers or so, they have all always alluded that they would work through the national sports authorities in dealing with the Black Stars, you know, or the national teams. But eventually, when they assume offices, we have these challenges always coming in. Why? And it's Why is that when they assume issue. office, they are not able to do it? Why? And it's a fundamental issue that uh, we need uh, to curtail and discussions have constantly been been going on. I have been engaging uh, with the ministry and I have been engaging with the FA that look, let's revert to the proper status quo. In the minds of Ghanaians and the lawmakers, they know that you could go directly to the ministry and, and have your issues done. And also I want to believe that it also has to do with uh, we as Ghanaians and as legislators cautiously resourcing the National Sports Authority to be able to handle certain things directly instead of uh, it going to the mother ministry to pass on these things. And sometimes when you are financially uh, handicapped, you see that you become so vulnerable even in society. Okay. So this is some things that we must cautiously uh, address, you know, so that the technical wing of the uh, ministry uh, of, of youth and sports, that is the National Sports Authority, will be allowed to function properly. Okay, so, um, Seth, tell me, uh, you just mentioned that the technical wing of the ministry. This clearly suggests that at least it should have a role to play in the national teams, and not just the national teams, but also the federations. That will help the success of um, Ghana's participation when it comes to going to major competitions. The Black Stars just got knocked out of the African Cup of Nations about a week ago, and... Um, Many people uh, have described the performance of the, uh, the national team as abysmal, and the FA has moved ahead to set up a five-member committee um, that would uh, search for the next uh, head coach of the Black Stars. In fact, Joy Sports reported on Monday that um, Ace Ankoma, who was part of the committee, has decided he's, uh, he's going to withdraw, and uh, he's been replaced by the Chief Executive Officer of Data Bank, Kojo Adai Mensah. Uh, what do you make of all these? Well, after such a horrendous performance uh, at the African Cup of Nations, back to back, the FA appears to move on as though nothing has happened. 
I've not been happy. I have been around football over the past years, and I've not been happy uh, with the current performance of uh, our national team in recent times. And uh, Cote d'Ivoire have not been an exception. And I would have recalled that the FA or the ministry, we should have been apologizing to Ghanaians. All of us should be apologizing to Ghanaians for the admirable performance that we put up out there. Uh, instead of just assuming that there is nothing and moving on. Uh, sacking the coach uh, isn't the fundamental problem with the, the, the Black Stars. Uh, I think that it should go beyond that. The technical team has also been dissolved. I think we should also move beyond the technical team aspect and get the, even the management that is leading the front should also have been reshuffled or taken out so that other hands or minds can also come on board to 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 help and rebuilding the the blasters if there's a the path that we want to chat uh, uh coming in and sacking the coach and going ahead to scout for a different coach when we have not actually reviewed all that has transpired uh during the tournament to me uh, uh we should not have gone on that tangent we we could have also equally revert to using maybe some of our local coaches and um, some of them have been tried other in act uh, in the uh, what is the name uh, assistant uh, coaches yeah as, as even stopgap coaches we've had Maxwell we have yes, Tete, all act as stopgap coaches yes. gap coaches and we could put three of them together that like we did for the uh, World Cup and let them mind the team for a while whilst we really stay stick back and study what really is a fundamental issue then we can bring that up because because it's, it's beyond the, the the issues that are happening. It's beyond the the coach. You know, it is not limited to the coach. If we continue on that tangent, we still have the same problem. We have sacked coaches and coaches after tournaments, and still we are where we are. You know, so it tells that there's a problem that we need to uproot, and we can't do that in a rush by always sacking the coach, sacrificing the coaches. Whilst uh, the management, don't let don't let forget that management also plays a critical role. Uh, in managing these boys to get the best results out of them. It's not only limited to the coach. And if they, they are not getting the desired support, definitely we have these uh, challenges happening. So, so, so from where me, you we, sit, we, we, from where you sit, Seth, mm -hmm. um, you said yeah. that it, we should go beyond the technical teams because to be failing consistently shows that there's a fundamental problem. Uh, from where yeah. you sit, what is that fundamental problem with our football? that has to go beyond the technical team? You see, uh, Nabla, you, you, you can recall that I have uh, managed a Premier League club to win the Ghana Premier League before. And I am versed in experience in when it comes to uh, football management. And most of these boys, some of these boys, have managed them to achieve that results with the Wild Stars. And we need a whole time to discuss these issues of what I perceive to have been a problem. This is your time limit today, this morning is very limited. Okay. We need a uh, much time so that we can digest the issues that I perceive uh, some of the problems that we need to uproot so that our football can be solid again. Okay, so then let, me, let me just move you on pretty quick. On Monday, the member of parliament for North Tong, uh, Samuel Okujatua Blackwa, revealed that the Ministry of Youth and Sports actually budgeted $8.5 million for the African Cup of Nations. And this has caused hue and cry in the Ghanaian um, citizenry. Uh, from where you sit, is it financially sound that uh, the Ministry of Youth and Sports decides to budget $8.5 million for a tournament which has prized money of $7 million? Um. You see, we need to ask ourselves certain questions that whether we are participating in the in tournaments so that we can make profit as a nation, or we are participating in tournaments so that we can invest, continue to invest in our good world as a country. We need to ask these questions. Uh, and besides, the budget amount is a budgeted amount. It's not the actuals. You know, so when you budget for a tournament, you also have the opportunity to expand and report on the actuals. You can end up making savings out of the budget that you have put out there, you know. But in addressing the concerns that the question that you have raised, I think that the, uh, we don't participate in football to make 
profit. There are more benefits that participating in international competition brings to the nation other than uh, uh, just uh, making money out of the price money, uh, making some money, uh, some savings out of the price money. You know, when you build up your, your, you participate in such tournament, people get to know more about your country. Some people get to read more about your, your uh, uh, tourist potentials. Some people even learn the research and they get to know your deficiency or niche that they can come into your country to take advantage of. And they come in with investments. You know, all these, if you, are, you quantify them, will end up being more than what you have even put in, into, the, uh, into participating in the tournament. Okay. You know, so let's, let's go beyond looking at making profit. We don't play football as a country to go out there to make profit. There is more that we brand our countries on, you know, and that goes beyond the, uh, the, the revenue aspect that we're looking at. Okay, Seth, I wish we could continue this conversation, but this is where time would, would permit us. And uh, hopefully, uh, we'll have this conversation uh, some other time where you can go into detail uh, what you think are the problems of Ghana football and how we can find an antidote to those, to those challenges. We appreciate your time with us this morning, Seth. Yeah, thank you, bro. Let's wrap up with um, some African Games stories. And uh, the Lagon Stadium is one of the facilities that is going to host the action as about 5,000 athletes assembly in Ghana effective March 8 for the event. My colleague, uh, Fenty Utahi, was at the Legon Sports Stadium to bring us up to speed on what is currently happening there ahead of the start of the tournament or the event on March 8. And this is our wrap up AM Sports here with me, Muftaw Nabila Abdullahi. Back in November last year, during a 100-day countdown event, Minister for Youth and Sports, Mustafa Youssef, said all facilities would be completed and handed over by the end of December 2023. Contractors are all expected to hand over the facilities in December. And most of the contractors, especially the Games Village, the contractor is done. We are just waiting because some of the students are still here. That is why the contractor is still on site. Once the students leave, the contractor will put the finishing touches and the games. The University of Ghana has revised the academic, academic calendar for us to be able to host the game. This was a message re-echoed by chairman of the local organizing committee, Dr. Ofusu Asari, who went a step further to claim that January 2024 would be used to test the facilities. To Bortiman before, what you saw today, what does it tell you? It tells you that we have come, we've come very far and they are committed. They are working day and night at Rocky around the clock and they have assured us that uh, come end of December they're going to hand over the facilities to us. The same thing applies to Consa over here and my rooms where we're standing and uh, they'll be handing over the facilities to us and we we'll use January and February to uh, to carry out uh, the, the, the test. But at the end of January no single facility has been fully completed and none has certainly been handed over. The Legon Sports Stadium will be the center of the Africa Games. It will be the host of the track and field event, which is the biggest attraction of the 26 sporting disciplines that will take place here in Accra. But with 40 days to the start of the competition, very important aspects of the stadium infrastructure remains uncompleted. And despite contractors working day and night, there is a critical nervous race against time to finish the project. Grounds have been prepared for the tartan tracks to be laid, and despite the tartan material arriving weeks ago, the actual laying has yet to begin inside the stadium. And that work could take weeks to finish. Groundsmen are also still busy restoring the pitch, which will host football games as well as field events. Aspects of the VIP area appear completed, with public announcement speakers fixed. But metal fabrications, painting, installation of critical power lines, fixing of sanitary wares are all still ongoing. The story is no different outside of the stadium. Access routes around the facility as well as the car parks have all yet to be completed. At the warm-up track, where the laying of the Titan trucks has begun in earnest, work seems to be progressing slowly. As you can see, these are rolls of tartan, obviously in all these white uh, wrapped uh, envelopes, if you like. And the laying is already ongoing, as you probably can see. So these rolls of tartan, once they get rolled over, 
you have the actual tartan truck and this is very standard standard manufacturing from mundo mundo are world leaders in the manufacture of truck uh, equipment and there are officials from mundo here who are working to ensure this truck is up to speed i've been told this would be completed in the next one week and bef after that they will now move to the stadium the field on the warmark truck looks green flat lights have also been installed but other critical facilities like the long jump pit remain undone. Over 5,000 elite athletes are expected in Ghana in 40 days to compete in the 26 sporting disciplines earmarked for these games. Two months ago, Vice President Dr. Mahmoud Baumia was special guest of honor at the 100 day countdown event. And after a tour of the facilities, he was convinced Ghana was ready to host the best ever games. There is a time for everything. And this is our time. Ghana is now ready, willing, and capable to organize and host Africa in the biggest sporting competition on the continent. The government and people of Ghana are honored to have been given the opportunity for which reason work has been ongoing assiduously since 2018 and his staff and yet despite the confidence of the country's authorities the glaring delays are hard to ignore it's no surprise then that dr asari is turning to spirituality counting on god almighty to come true for the country everything in this world has its time and god's time is the best this is the time God has dedicated or assigned to Ghanaians to host the African Games. Dr. Nkrumah was part of the founding fathers. You can imagine 1965. Why hasn't it been possible for Ghana to host the Games? This is our time. This is our opportunity. We have to take advantage of the opportunity. Make the most of the opportunity.